The importance of the passage we're dealing with today in Luke 10 can slip by us if we don't pay close attention. So let's do some groundwork and set some context before we dive into the text itself. I think a quick review of some Jewish legal and cultural requirement is a good place to start. Now, as we've already discussed, every healthy adult Jewish male was expected to make the journey from wherever they lived to Jerusalem three times a year during the three feasts, once in the spring, once in the early summer, and then once again in the fall. This story happens in the fall feast time frame, which encompasses the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. If you do enough research, you'll find out that scholars don't really know if this commissioning of the 72 happened on the way to Jerusalem or on the way home. As a matter of fact, we're not even sure if it was 72 or 70. There seems to be some debate. And look, in the end, those details are pretty unimportant. But let me tell you why I think that 72 is the right choice. When the Jews set up their legal system, they created a court called the Sanhedrin. They appointed six representatives from each of the 12 tribes to that high court. That's a total of 72 judges. Jesus is not far from being judged by a minority quorum of that court. And he's gonna speak about judgment in this text. You can think that through and let me know what you decide. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, for now, let's say that Jesus chose 72 messengers to travel between Galilee and Jerusalem and proclaim a single message along the way. We'll get to that message in a minute, but let's look at how the text begins. It says this, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. This is the key point. Jesus is sending the messengers ahead of himself and he's only sending them to towns where he himself is about to be. He goes on to say that they're to take no money bag or knapsack or sandals. And then he says, greet no one on the road. We see the exact same phrase used in 2 Kings 4 when Elisha gives his staff to his servant Gehazi and tells him to go lay it on the dead son of a Shunammite woman. Look, we don't have time to dive into that story, but in both cases, that story and this one, there's one common factor. They were sent with so much urgency that they were not even to stop and kindle a conversation with friends or family along the way. Not even a nobleman. These were life and death missions. The 72 approached each town along the way and entered the homes that would welcome them as messengers of the coming king, Jesus. In those homes, they were instructed to share meals and perform miracles for the families, bless those families with peace. However, in homes and towns where they and their coming king were rejected, they were to move on, shake the dust off their feet with a proclamation. And here's that message that we said we would address, the one that makes this study come to life. In both cases, accepted or rejected, they were to proclaim this, the kingdom of God has come near or come near to you. It's a single statement that has a two-pronged effect. First, for those who would receive the messengers, it filled their hearts with joy and prepared them to receive Jesus when he arrived. Second, for those who rejected the messengers, it filled their hearts with ambivalence or even reviling to think that the one who would claim to be king would soon pass through their town. Jesus addresses these two possible reactions by saying that the ones who reject the messengers will be worse off in the day of judgment than the city of Sodom. Sodom, the most wicked city in all the Bible, the city where the men of the town sought to rape other visiting men as an act of hedonistic sport. Sodom, this is the epitome of corruption and wickedness. Or was it? If Sodom is the most wicked city in biblical history, why would it be more tolerable for Sodom in the day of judgment than the towns that reject Jesus' messengers? Well, let's go one step further, because Jesus does. Jesus lists out three cities of northern Israel, Capernaum, Bethsaida, and Chorazin. These three cities were known as the Harvard, Princeton, and Yale, if you will, of progressive Jewish thinking in Jesus' day. Then he compares those three cities 
with three of the most pagan cities in biblical history, Tyre, Sidon, and Sodom. He says that it will be more tolerable for those pagan cities in the day of judgment than it will be for the great cities of enlightened Jewish thinking. How can that be? The answer is pretty simple. And it plays perfectly into the message that Jesus is giving his 72 messengers. He ends by saying this, the one who hears you, hears me. And the one who rejects you, rejects me. And the one who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. There it is, the key to our lesson. You see, Jesus never stood in Tyre, Sidon, or Sodom. He never did miracles there. He never preached the kingdom to those people. Yet these were wicked cities, but they never looked at Jesus in the face and willfully rejected him, refusing to acknowledge who he is and respond accordingly. To reject Jesus' ordained messenger is to reject Jesus. And to reject Jesus is to reject God himself. There is no more wicked act than to reject the salvation of God, which is exactly what the name Jesus means in Hebrew. Yeshua means God's salvation. So let's close with this thought. All of us have heard the ordained messenger of God proclaim the kingdom of God has come near. Since that's true, we must all recognize that the kingdom has a king. In what ways do we recognize him as king and submit to him as such? In what ways do we know his authority and yet refuse to submit? We call Jesus Lord and Savior, and yet so many of us treat him as Savior while refusing him or rejecting him as Lord. Wouldn't today be a good day to renew our submission to the king and his will for our lives? Wouldn't today be a good day to gladly receive the message of the kingdom which has come near to you.